went to something so different from the traditional system. And if I give you a bit of my experience, I've been here 15 years now, so I've seen a lot of changes in the school over that time. And when I came here, I came from Craven High School, and I thought to myself, I'm going to see how the other half went now. You can see my office here, the part of that control teaching, the system that fantastic. And, and I got a bit of a shock when I came, because I thought, these are just normal kids like everyone else. <laughs> um, the work ethic wasn't terribly good, they were way too social, um, people complained about you know, the behaviour of the kids. And I thought, well, well, it's not quite what I expected, this beautiful setting, this beautiful little school, but these are just, there's a lot of kids here like every other school. So I was a little bit disappointed when I first came because it wasn't quite the vision I had. Um, but there was there's some of the issues, I guess, at third were the kids are scattered, and you would know that from some of you, that you don't have access to your friends like kids up in the suburbs have. You can't just go next door or down the street. Often our kids have to rely on parents to take them to their friends' places at night and weekends. So what they found, the school was their social base, so this is where they came to socialise. And so teachers often complain, you know, they come to class and all they want to do is chat, 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 and they work every, as I said, it's cool. Anyway, so about six years ago, seven years ago now, we had a new principal come in, and we started looking at how we could do things differently. So um, I guess the following year, Ale was born, and uh, we had lots of teething problems, lots and lots of teething problems, but we had a group of committed teachers who were committed to changing the way education operated. So we were looking at, uh, at not just um, not just changing education, but completely transforming the way we taught our kids. And what's interesting now, and you, you will have heard about STEM funding for schools, some of you, science, technology, science, engineering, technology, maths. Um, the government has put millions and millions of dollars into schools to fund the STEM program. We were given two and a half million for STEM. And um, so we're pretty excited. We've already had the architects out. They've already looked at what, what they're changing in our school. And, um, and we're pretty excited about the prospects of what STEM means for us. But it's very daunting for lots of other schools. I've been to a lot of conferences with other principals who are like, we're getting all this money and you're telling us we have to integrate our curriculum and we have to have our teachers working together and planning together. But where's the training and development for that? We're not used to doing that. And I've spoken to many schools where they've got, you know, their English teachers work and plan together and they teach English. Their science teachers work together and plan science. Their maths teachers, their history teachers, they don't ever mix. So I've, I've been along to a couple of conferences now and I've sat there thinking, well, this is a waste of my time. I'm just not getting anything out of it. Because for five years now, six years, our teachers don't work in isolation in their subject areas. They work as a team. So you'll see when we go around, we've got our Year 9 teachers who work together, our Year 8 teachers who work together, Year 10 teachers who work together. So every Monday night, we have an extra meeting where those teachers work together to plan the curriculum. So what you've seen in the staff room with the uh, Business and Enterprise Unit, those teachers worked on Monday night to work out how we're going to run this. These are the curriculum areas that we have to cover. How are we going to do it so it engages the kids? And that's where the concept of the Saturday market at Woodside came up. So the end product, we always start with the end in mind. What's the end product? Well, the end product was the Woodside market. And then how are we going to work towards getting to that market? And how are we going to cover the curriculum to get to that market? So that's our focus. So when I sit in those meetings with other principals, I think, well, we're already there. We've already got our curriculum areas working together. Planning the units is an integrated unit. So for us, we just want the building. Because what we did here, the kids created our spaces. So we had to rely on, like, we had a shoestring budget. We had the kids building booths, the kids building ottomans, the kids painting the walls. So the kids have created our spaces that now the government is spending lots and lots of money in schools to create for them. So for us, it's a case of, well, we'll I'll show you when we go around where the money's going to be spent and what it will look like, and we're really excited. It's going to be fantastic. Next year will be a little bit disruptive for us while we have to move kids around for the building to happen, but the whole concept at the end is going to be absolutely fantastic. So that's a little bit, and I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm going to try and cut this short, but there are a couple of other things I just want to talk about. Um, a couple of the highlights, I think, that make us such a unique school. Our, our, our curriculum is based on PBLs, project-based learning. It doesn't mean that everything we do has to be a PBL, but basically we're looking at a project, and the end result, as I said, is a publicly presented product. So for this, it was the market, and we had parents coming out to the market. We had parents invited into the school to have a look at the school market. Year nines, I know a number of you are in year, are going into year nine or in year nine. Um, for them, I'll just give you an example of one of their units. It was float, what floats your boat. And um, what the kids had to do, they had to build a boat. 
They were just given cardboard, I think it's still at the back, huge sheets of cardboard and tape. That's all they were allowed to have. And in that, with that, they had to build a boat that floated. But not just a boat that floated on its own, it had to contain a, a, a team. Four or five kids had to sit in that boat while it floated. So that was our end product. So if all of the work building up to that in math, science, English was all related to floating that boat. If they didn't get their maths right or they didn't get their science right, the boat sank. So they had lots of cracks on flotation, the pencil line, and uh, lots of maths on scale and ratio, making a scale model of the boat, adding up the weights of the people in the team to make sure that the boat held them all. Their English was integrated. We looked at um, the boat people, why people get in those boats and come over to Australia and risk their lives. So whilst it's not technically related to the science of making the boat, we try and link everything as much as we can. So um, we looked at, go back to where you came from, a fairly controversial series some of you would be aware of. We looked at um, issues as to why they left their country of origin and came to Australia. Kids had to do a number of writing tasks related to what floats your boat and, and asylum seekers. And of course Woodside's very close to us, so a lot of our kids have very strong opinions about asylum seekers. So. Just, that's how our units work. So again, the team gets together Monday night, they look at, well, the English teacher says, well, I think we can do this in English and we can include this. The science teacher looks at, well, this fits in, in the curriculum, we can include this in science. Well, it fits in with the maths here, so we'll do this lot of maths because that fits into the unit. So it, that's how we integrate our units. And the end product, we took those boats to the wood block. A couple of years ago, we went to Murray Bridge. But um, the last couple of years, we've been to the Wood William South Pool. And it looks like coffins on the top of cars and on the trailers. It looks like we're, tra we're transporting all these huge coffins. But the kids had a fantastic day. Um, and I know one year uh, it took 11 kids. It was the 11th kid in this cardboard boat that finally sank it. Yeah. Whereas some others get in their boat and it wobbly and it sinks straight away. But it means they haven't got their maths right. They haven't got science right um, when they built it. So um, that was a fantastic day. We had a lot of parents come out and watch the kids uh, in their boats. There were competitions, they had a barbecue lunch. It was a fantastic way to celebrate the end of that unit. So that's our PBLs. Um, and just a, a couple of other things I think that are really make us quite unique from other schools. We believe in accelerating students. We believe in, in allowing students to achieve their potential. So for example, this year, um, prior to taking over the principal's job, although I've continued it, I had a year 12 English class. And um, I had three year, four year 10 students in that class, four year 11 students in that class, and then the rest were year 12 students. Some of my highest flyers in that class who ended up with an A for English at Year 12 were the Year 10 students. So what it does for those students, it gives them a real purpose, a real sense of, well, if they were in Year 10, yes, they would have done well and they would have got an A. But there was something about having been given the privilege of doing Year 12 that really motivated them. They worked and worked and worked. And when Christina talked about drafting, it's all about drafting. It's about, well, you know, here's your rubric. We mark on the rubric and a kid might get a C for their first draft but they can see very clearly what they need to do to improve. They can see on the rubric, well, you know, you, you haven't really um, integrated your quotations well enough into your text. So you need to make that more fluent and that way you'll get up to the A. So it's very clear to them where they need to go in order to achieve success. And that's right from year eight. We use that system from year eight. Every summative task has a rubric, so the kids are never left in doubt as to why we've got a C, why did I get a D, why didn't I get an A? It's clear and we encourage them to draft to achieve excellence. So um, one of our top student this year um, got a merit for research project in year 11, and she got a, an A for English, year 12 English, when she was in year 10. What that means for her, she wants to be a vet. <clears throat> so what it means for her, when it came to her final exam, which was math studies, because she's done physics, chemistry, and the difficult maths this year. So even though she had some uh, year 12 subjects already under her belt with really good scores, it didn't mean that she sat and off and just did two subjects this year. She did a full course. But by the time she got to her math studies exam, the final exam, she knew she didn't even really need to study, because she had enough points for her ATAR to get into her course with what she'd already done. So it completely takes the pressure off kids in that crucial year of year 12. And we don't accelerate everybody. Like, you know, we're not going to say to a kid, well, you can do Year 12 English, unless they're ready. We're not having kids accelerated to get a C. If we don't think they're going to achieve success, then we don't do it. But we don't hold kids back, and we try and encourage kids, and the difference it makes to their motivation is huge. So just a, they're, they're just a few things. I won't keep you any longer, because I could go on for a while, I'm home with that food. But like I said, been here 15 years.